All right, so it's a little chilly and windy out today, um, but we're gonna try to go and pick some dandelions and make some dandelion jelly. A lot of people, they spray their yards um, to get rid of all the weeds and stuff, which kills off the dandelions. Um, but there's a lot of things that you can do with dandelions. Everything of the plant or every part of the plant is actually edible. And uh, the, I mean, the leaves you can make salads out of or cook greens, um, the roots, you can dry and make a coffee substitute out of, and the flowers can also go in salads, or you can make jelly out of them. Jelly kind of has a flavor of honey. So we're gonna kind of walk through this process and show you how to do it. So to get started, first I should say that when you are going to choose some dandelions, you wanna make sure one that's in an area that hasn't been sprayed for anything. Although probably generally if it has been sprayed, you're not gonna have any dandelions. Um, but if it's a spot where you're using non-organic fertilizers and that sort of thing, you don't want to use those types of uh, flowers because you don't want that kind of stuff going into your jelly that you're going to eat. Um, let's see a pear. Um, got dog hair hanging from my hat. Uh, next, you also don't want to do it like next to a road where you're getting a lot of the car pollution coming through. And you don't want to use dandelions in an area where you walk your dogs because, you know, you don't want that in your jelly either. So to get started, uh, we're going to need two cups of dandelion flowers. And you only want the flower part. You don't want the uh, greens, the, the leaves, because they're really bitter. And you don't want the bitterness in your jelly either. So just the flowers. And I'm just starting off with a big old four cup measuring cup and a pair of scissors to get started. So let's go get ourselves some dandelions. Okay, hopefully you can see me okay. So we got our big thing of dandelion flowers held up here, our big measuring cup. Uh, now we only need two cups, but I uh, overfilled this because one, we are gonna have to remove all these, the green parts on the bottom. So we're gonna lose some volume there. Uh, and plus we wanna kind of pack it down a little bit, not, not too tight, light, lightly packed two cups is what we need. So I have uh, about three and a half cups here three and three quarter cups, something like that. Um, so once we get all the bottoms picked off here, uh, and basically to do that, you can see where I trimmed it. I trimmed it right at the bottom of the green. Um, but we'll just get rid of that, maybe. There we go. Got rid of the bottom and see the, the, the yellow flower part just comes apart. Um, so I'll go through and, and get all of that. Plus I got some greens for Buford, our rabbit. So we'll see if he uh, likes those. Pick a few dandelion greens for him. So next step is we are going to steep this. So let's go take care of that. You want some, some greens? Try those. Try that out. Yeah. Okay, so I finished trimming all the little green knobbies off the bottom of the dandelions and ended up with just about two cups. I was just a hair under, but that's okay. So now I've got it in this jar. And while I was doing that, I uh, boiled some water, four cups of water. And now we're gonna put that in here. All four cups of boiling water. Right, so got that in there. Give it a little stir down and mix it in a little bit. So basically we're making a dandelion tea right now. Cause we're gonna let this steep. Okay. All right, just 
put the lid on this and we're gonna let that cool down and once it's cooled down we'll put it in the fridge for 24 hours and then we'll come back and do the next step to get this jelly rolling okay so it's been a day later about 24 hours and this is what our tea looks like now in the jar not so pretty just kind of a mucky looking mess right now but we're gonna need to strain this out so I've got my my big uh, four cup measuring cup here again and a strainer uh, to do the first straining so we're gonna do that now and we'll see if I can do it without making a mess just gonna pour this in here All right, looks like I need a spoon. Rest that out. Then you want to kind of uh, press it because you want to get as much of the liquid out as possible. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm getting a few drips out there. Yeah, there's some more. So you see it's pretty dark. It's uh, the color of honey um, or beer. And that is our liquid. So we have just under four cups here and that's what we want. And so now we are gonna put that in a saucepan and get that boiling and I'll show you that step next okay so now next step that we have this in the saucepan so we're gonna bring this up to a boil Let's turn my heat on and we are going to add one package of uh, the liquid pectin and you can also use a package of powder pectin pectin so whatever you have and two tablespoons of lemon juice. So here we go with the lemon juice. Now there's a couple other options that you can add here. I am not doing it um, because uh, well, I'm just not doing it. So two other things that you can add. You can add a vanilla bean um, where you you know you'd split the vanilla bean and, and scrape out the insides and, and add that in there but i don't have any vanilla beans so i'm not adding that uh, you can also add uh some lemon zest but i'm not adding that i'm just using the lemon juice and not the lemon zest so we got two tablespoons of the lemon juice in there and now we're going to add our pectin okay add our pectin in here this is fruit pectin like i said i'm using the liquid and you can also use the powder. And then we're gonna bring this up to a boil before we add our sugar. And then uh, we'll be adding four cups of sugar. There's some other recipes out there that uh, call for five or five and a half or even sometimes more sugar than that. Um, we're not, I prefer the ones that use a little bit less sugar. So this is four cups. So basically four cups of liquid, four cups of sugar. So this is coming to a boil now. The crazy thing is, is that right now it smells like honey. There's a very nice aroma coming off of this. Uh, so now it's up to the rolling boil. So we're gonna add now we're going to add our sugar, four cups of sugar. So we're going to get this all stirred in so that it dissolves. So I got these little four ounce jars uh, to put the jelly in and um, I think I might have more liquid than I do jars, but we'll see. Uh, but I thought these were kind of cute. 
but you can also use eight ounce jars. Uh, so we'll see how far this goes to fill, or how far the liquid goes to fill up these jars. Um, so these jars have been uh, washed and I'm gonna can these in a water bath. Now, basically, if you're not doing water bath canning, you would just fill your jars, put the lids on, let them set for uh, several hours to cool down and for your jelly to start to set and then you would put them in the refrigerator uh, to finish setting up. Now, if you are doing the water bath canning, uh, you fill your jars and then put them in the water bath canner for 10 minutes, uh, depending on your altitude, but for me it's 10 minutes. Um, and then let those set up and then you can put them on the shelf, they'll be shelf stable. But if you're not water bath canning, you will want to put these in the fridge once the jars cool down. Okay, so I'm going to start ladling, ladling this in. And this is still going to be really thin because it's got to set up. But just putting it in, you want to leave about a half inch of head space. Okay, so here's our full jars. Uh, looks just like honey and smells just like warm honey. Um, so now we're going to add the lids. Okay, all the lids are on, and then we're going to add the bands. And you just kind of want these hand uh, tight on there, you know, you don't want to tighten them too much. So I'm going to get these tight, all tightened up and get them on here, and then we'll get them in the water bath canner. Okay, so I got all the lids on there. Um, one thing I didn't mention previously is that you should wipe down the... Before you put the lids on, you want to wipe down the rim of the jars with a damp paper towel just to make sure that any uh, sticky stuff isn't around the top, and that will ensure that you get a proper seal on your lids. Um, so now I'm going to just... Pick this up, all it over here, and start putting these into the water bath canner. Uh, I've already turned the heat on here. We're going to bring this up to a boil and then let it boil for 10 minutes. And uh, one other thing, too, that I need to mention is that when you are um, tightening the lids on these jars, make sure you use like a paper towel or something to kind of hold on to the jar because it's really hot. Um, that hot sugary liquid um, definitely heats up the jars pretty quick and even the lids and the bands get pretty hot. So you'll definitely want to have something uh, to protect your hands with, like a mitt or a paper towel, um, so that you don't burn yourself. All right, I'm going to finish loading this up. Okay, so we've got the water bath canner going. Uh, the temperature's coming up and they're just starting to boil in there. I'll probably give it another minute to get a little bit more of a rolling boil going on and then I'll set the timer and we will have them in the boiling water in the water bath canner for 10 minutes. Alright, so they're all out of the canner now and already the jars are starting to seal. I don't know if you heard that little pop a second ago as one of the lids just sealed. Um, that's some pretty looking stuff. It's still really thin right now, so it has to cool down to set up. And uh, so we're just gonna wait for that. Oh, there goes another pop. So we'll let these sit for a few hours and cool down and see how they set up. Okay, so our jelly is done. Now we did have a little trouble in paradise over the making of this jelly. Uh, my first go round that is on the video did not set. You may have noticed when I was uh, putting it in the jars, it may have looked pretty thin to you, especially those of you who have done canning and made jellies and jams in the past. Uh, I generally make jam, so I wasn't uh, as familiar with how thick it should be when just making jelly. Um, so it was a little thin and I waited hours and hours. And finally this morning, uh, which was the following day, uh, I 
came and, and checked it and it was like zero. Now, if your jelly doesn't set up and you end up with a syrup, you can just use it as syrup. You can put it on pancakes or on ice cream and whatever you want. Um, so that's one of your choices. Some people are like, oh, my jelly didn't set up and they throw it away. Don't do that. You can still use it uh, if it's a syrup or you can still make jelly out of it. So I had to empty it all into a saucepan and uh, rewash all the jars, get rid of the original lids that I used and get some new lids so that they would reseal when I was doing the water bath canning. Um, added some more pectin, some more lemon juice and about three quarters cup more sugar and re-brought it to a hard boil again. It's a little bit thicker. I still didn't like the consistency, so I added two more tablespoons of pectin, brought it to a hard boil again, let it hard boil for one minute, each time just hard boil for one minute. Uh, and then I put it in the jars, and now it doesn't move. It's good. So um, I made a little label for it here, but the label's a little too big for the jars. But. Um, and I got the labels from a website where I got the, the original recipe from, uh, and I will post a link to that website below. I think it's called Home Acres vlog site that has some good recipes on there. Um, so yeah, overall, while it took a little extra time, ended up being a success, uh, and it tastes delicious. It tastes just like, like a sweet honey. So I recommend, you know, giving it a try. Danny Lions are all over the place. You know, you can get rid of them or you can uh, go ahead and make some jelly out of them and, and also use the greens and roots. I mean, there's tons of recipes on the internet for dandelions. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with them and they're they're plenty nutritious. Now jelly, because of the sugar in it, probably isn't the most nutritious thing, but it's kind of a fun little project to do. And, uh, you know, it, it's good stuff, man. So, hope everything has gone well at your homesteads and your gardens as you're getting started with this new season. But now I'm gonna go relax because I've had a busy day, but I'm happy with my jelly. So cheers and uh, namaste. Stay safe, see you soon.